The Northern Undead Asylum is where your Dark Souls journey begins. At the end of a long hallway, past many cells, is one like any other. There's nothing special about this cell, or the undead being held captive inside it. Undead don't really die, so this room will be your resting place till the end of the world. What do you make of this as a living space? Hmm. What's up, I'm John Dark Souls, and welcome to my crib. Here we got the entrance hall, which leads straight into the living room. It's pretty spacious, got lots of room for activities. And oh, we got a skylight up here. Get some of that vitamin D. Over here's the kitchen, where we got sacks of food. I'm assuming there's food in there, I haven't checked. This is the guest bedroom and bathroom. Don't look in there. And here's where the magic happens, the master bedroom. All the ladies love this. Speaking of which, I got some coming over in a few. Y'all gotta head out. Thanks for stopping by though. Uh, but the whole game can't take place in this cell. Fortunately, salvation comes. You're given a key to escape by a literal knight in shining armor. You take the key and venture into the dark world of Dark Souls. Immediately, you're greeted by non-hostile NPCs that are just... vibing. You got this dude out here, and these guys in their cells. Their cell doors are locked, just like yours was, so you can't go in normally. Me though? I got an all-access pass. These guys have much bigger cells than the player character did. What's the deal with that? This guy seemed to have a cellmate at some point, but uh... not sure what happened in here. It's weird to think that these undead will forever be held captive in these cells, surrounded on all four sides by these unflattering walls while they rot away. But you, you were given a way out. Let's find a way out of here. Oh, I'm just gonna ignore that. After a bit of fighting, you find yourself overlooking a courtyard. To the right is the way forward, but to the left is what I want to focus on. There's an item on these steps you can't quite reach from this side. And back here is nothing. It feels like something is missing. Like, look at how long this passage is. It's not too long, but it's just long enough to where you feel like something should be at the end. There very well could have just been a wall right here and the game wouldn't change in the slightest. But that is what the series is all about. I love going over areas I've been in a dozen times and finding weird little spots. And oh boy, do we have some more of those later. Heading back to the right side, you get to meet the hero who saved you. Can I just say, I think this whole little scenario is beautiful. Like, this might be my favorite bit of environmental design in the whole game. You enter through a hole in the wall, and the scene is framed perfectly. The way you enter the room and see Oscar, the knight who threw you the key earlier, lounging on some rubble. The grossly incandescent sun shining down, illuminating him beautifully. It's picturesque. Striking. The final stretch of the Northern Undead Asylum brings you to this cliffside. I like how everything was enclosed up to this point, and once you walk through the door, you're out in the open. The cliffs are steep and mountains stretch out into the distance. To escape captivity and have this as your first sight must be breathtaking. There's a few tucked away spots out here. You can go behind this pillar. Or you can find this spot, pretty well hidden. Some dude has leaned up against the wall. All that's left is his soul. Makes you wonder what his story was. You're given a first-class flight to the land of Lordran. There's a lot to see here. You have this massive wall imposing over you. Darkness deep below. A mysterious elevator that takes you underground. As well as a graveyard that leads to God knows what. This is your home base for the journey that lies before you. If you didn't learn before, Firelink Shrine will teach you that exploration is key to Dark Souls. There's so many passageways and buildings, I remember getting a bit lost when I first played the game. But that's part of the fun. You spend a dozen or two hours exploring past Firelink. 
only to come back and discover a spot you didn't notice before. Maybe it's stuff that doesn't matter to you at this point in the game, but you know what? You remember it, and you come back here when you start your next playthrough. Let's check out some of those spots. It's pretty easy to miss these steps right here if you spawn in and head straight to the Undead Burg. And then it might be easy to miss another set of steps that take you to the new Londo Ruins. I like hanging out down here. You get a great view of the cities in the distance you'll never get to visit, as well as the dank Blight Town beneath you. This guy, I didn't even know he was back here. I was walking around, soaking in the atmosphere of Firelink while writing this script, and was surprised to find this lad. Even after the handful of playthroughs I've done over the years, I'm still learning more about this game. And these chests back here, I mean, come on. The only way to get here is with a crazy jump, or by purposefully walking into what looks like a death pit. This is a cozy little nook, though. And I just noticed, it sounds like wood when you walk on it. Listen closely. Here's walking on stone. Here's walking on grass. And here's the secret room. How about that? Has that been documented anywhere? Let me know in the comments if any of you have noticed this before. Firelink is your safe space in the world of Lordran. No enemies will harm you here. Well, as long as you stay away from them first. The Undead Burg. This is one of the towns where commoners would live. And considering the state of the world, it's no surprise that the town is in such disrepair. Buildings are overgrown. Stairs are crumbling. Objects are destroyed all over the place. You'd be forgiven for thinking the whole world looked like this. But again, we'll get to that later. Let's do some scouting. It's interesting to me that there's a couple houses still completely intact. All the stuff on the shelves and tables are placed like everything is completely fine. Until... In this house, there's a little balcony off to the side. Not sure what its purpose is, but it's cozy. It's cool to hang out here with my buddy Wilbur and check out the great view. Look at this dude. He think he's sneaky, but he ain't fooling anyone. Here's another pointless path. I'm curious what the point of areas like this are. Like, was this intended to lead somewhere early in development, but they scrapped it? Or was this truly just a random path that never had any meaning? And there's so many of these in the game. Like, why do they... Hold on. You see that? That's suspicious as hell. And it's not an illusory wall. What if we take the cam- Oh, wow. There's no hidden doorway on the other side of the arch, so I'm not sure what to make of that. I feel like my theory of removed passageway is given a bit of credence with this discovery. But maybe this little archway chunk is used somewhere else in the game and this hole is actually open. They didn't want it to be open here, so they just quickly threw up a texture on it and blocked access. Hard to say what the actual situation is, but I'm sure whatever you come up with in your head is much more interesting than its real purpose. A bit further into Undead Burg, you reach this overlook. It's such a bizarre view once you start to think about it. Look at how empty the horizon is over here. It stretches out literally as far as the eye can see, but there's nothing. Over here you have what I assume is Darkroot Basin and Darkroot Garden? I'm confused on how high up we're supposed to be in the world. I would have guessed the elevation of most of the game's locations takes place pretty close to ground level, but look down here. This is like, impossibly high up. We're talking city in the clouds elevation here. Literally, the clouds are way below the undead berg and ground level is assumedly way below that. 
The only other look you get at whatever you'd call this whole walled-in city is from the opening cinematic, and it looks nothing like what we see in the game. Look at all the cascading walls in the final game that are completely absent in the cinematic. I don't really think the logistics of that really matter, it's just fun to nitpick sometimes. What From Software was going for here superseded the need to depict the environment totally consistently throughout every area in the game. They wanted this stunning vista to be a reward for making it this far. And even knowing how inaccurate this is to what it should look like realistically, it's beautiful. The clouds slowly shifting away while the sunbeams flicker onto a perfectly empty horizon. This is pure fantasy, and I can't get enough of it. Enough of that beautiful sky and fresh air nonsense. Let's travel to the area below Firelink Shrine we looked at earlier. Take a deep breath and inhale the noxious stench of Blight Town. I don't know how many years Blight Town has existed in world, but it's a surprise all these structures were built in the first place. It looks like you could lightly breathe on some of these platforms and they would immediately collapse. And this place is an actual maze. There are so many different layers and they all connect in weird spots, it's just a nightmare to traverse. And in the original release, there were some big frame rate drops here, making the torment even worse. It's interesting, recording this footage here and being able to pull back and get a better view of the scaffolding. It's kinda hard to take it all in from the ground level, and if you're playing on the default brightness, it's near impossible to see anything. I turned it up to max for this section, just so we can see everything. This isn't a perspective you normally see of Blight Town, and you're not supposed to. This is the highest elevation view you can get looking at Blight Town. From down below, it's hard to get a grasp on the layout. It feels complicated. Viewed from this angle, it all seems so small. As for spots to find in this area, I have a few. Past this bonfire is a peculiar circular room. It's the bottom of a pretty big pit you go through earlier in the level. All it has is this one chest with a useful enough item, but this is one of those rooms that feels like it's hiding something. Like, why is this bottom dug out here? The fact that you're forced to climb a tiny ladder to get out after you drop down, I don't, I don't know. It strikes me as one of those areas where it felt like there were bigger plans for it initially, but they cut back on them later. And to make it not feel completely pointless, they added the chest with a slightly useful item. Here's the bottom of Blight Town, which is pretty much a swamp. When you walk in this swamp, you take poison damage, so you're encouraged to be in this icky paint-like goop as little as possible. But if you endure a long, painful walk, you can make your way to the home of the giant leeches. You can steal their precious items if you want, but I don't want to bother them. This is their home. Our final stop takes us to the stunning city of An Orlando. The reveal of this place is beautiful. The cutscene builds it up so much and has this amazing shot of the city. Once you're in control, they placed a good bit of steps to take you lower down, so you get to admire the view yourself in the downtime. I can't get enough of the aesthetic of this place. It feels so angelic. Everything is perfect. Look at the chapel. It's unnecessarily big and empty. These people take up such little space. It's almost funny seeing them just stand here, doing nothing. It's uncanny in a way, considering that there is no furniture in the entire room. The only intentionally placed item on the ground floor here is this single pot. As well as this painting. Huh. Maybe another time. Outside of the buildings in An Orlando, you're drawn to the cathedral at the center. I mean, how could you not be? It's the first building of its kind you've seen in the game. Buildings in the Undead Burg, the only other place that seemed to house a large population, looked nothing like this. This cathedral, it's, it's just so regal. And the inside of it is even more grand. 
so many decorative flourishes that make this place unlike any other in Dark Souls. These rooms are built for giants, with the big spaces and doors and all. The scale of this place helps convey the importance of the cathedral as a location in-world. Even beyond these magnificent rooms, there's still a lot to appreciate. I like these perfectly normal bedrooms. So many of the houses you come across up to this point are rough. Even if the furniture is still intact, it's all so dingy. Rooms here aren't perfect, considering the occasional tilted painting or chair on the ground, but it's very easy to imagine royalty sleeping in this room. What other spots we have in here? Uh, oh! This took me a second to process. See if you can catch it. How the hell did this guy get in here? This would be a cozy little room if not for the anvil-headed demon. This room is pretty cool. Nothing in it, but it's still cool. Though looks can be deceiving. If you go out the door and down this way, you'll notice a slit in the wall revealing some stairs. And you can see there's a passageway to the room you were just in. Sure enough, there was an illusory wall in the fireplace. I love this room, it's spooky as hell. You don't know what kind of creature could be just out of your light radius. Oh, it's just some chests. Let me get some of that loot- Our last spot is a memorable one. Guinevere's room perfectly embodies the, well, perfectness of Anne Orlando. The red carpet, the golden curtains, the sun pouring in from somewhere. This scene is impeccable. Check out my tour of Fallout 3 if you're in the mood to explore some more. As always, leave a comment suggesting a game for a future tour and maybe I'll get around to it someday. Thanks for watching and see you next time.